I've often seen in comments under these videos, people get frustrated and they say, oh, I wanna just be myself in dating. How come I can't just be myself? I should just be authentic, be ourselves. Why does this all have to be so complicated? And I get it. I feel that same way and I felt that way when I was trying to find the love of my life and I was like, I just wanna be myself in dating. And while there's a huge truth in that, that you should absolutely be yourself, you should absolutely be authentic, learning to interact with someone, learning to court one another and to fall in love is like a dance. Imagine learning to salsa dance. You're gonna go salsa dance with somebody and they said, I don't wanna learn any moves, I don't wanna learn the steps, I just wanna be myself. Let's salsa dance ourselves. And <laughs> what would happen in that dance? They'd be bumping into each other, they'd be stepping on each other's toes. In fact, my second date with my wife, we went salsa dancing. And there was all kinds of moments when I was stepping on her toes, she was stepping on my toes, because we didn't know the dance. Courting one another, learning to fall in love, there's a dance to this. And there's certain things that we do that cause the other person to pull away naturally, and there are other things we do that cause them to draw in. So today, I'm gonna share with you five hidden mistakes that make men pull away and what you can do instead. Check it out. Hey there, this is Matt Boggs, and I'm the founder of the Love and Relationships Division here at the Brave Thinking Institute, where our mission is empowering people to create and live a life they love, and that includes your love life. So if you like this video, I encourage you to click that subscribe button and click that little bell, because every week we bring you new video to empower you in your love life. And today we're talking about five mistakes that make men pull away. Mistake number one is over-investing too early. I was on a coaching call recently with a woman who was in my Manifest Your Man program. And she was saying, oh, this one's so hard for me. She's like, when I love somebody or I just feel like I could fall in love with them, I just wanna give to them. I wanna pour love on them. I wanna text them. I wanna give them gifts. And so she's like, I know that this is what's been driving men away. And so if you have a tendency because you're a giver, you have a tendency because you're open-hearted, you love and you love to just pour love on people you love, know this, there's a pacing that helps your man open up to you. When you over-invest too early, what you're doing is you're training him what to expect. And when someone is constantly giving to you, the human nature is to then lean back and receive. And so it's, a, it's the difference between going to a fine dining restaurant and cooking at home together. Imagine a fine dining experience. The person who's going to that fine dining experience finds their table, they sit down, the waiter comes over, brings them a drink, takes their order, they go back, they cook the food, they bring the food to the table. The whole meanwhile, that person is just relaxed and receiving and enjoying what's happening. That's what you're training your man to do when you're constantly investing, sending the text, making the plans, cooking for him, giving him gifts, doing all of that. He's like, okay, I'm gonna sit back and receive. And you're training him to not invest with you. Compare that to cooking with a partner. Cooking with a partner, you come over to the house, you're like, all right, you chop the vegetables, I'm gonna do the meat. You know, you open the wine, I will set the table. And both of you work together to create this beautiful experience of a, having this meal together that the two of you will enjoy. That is so much more valuable because when he invests in the relationship, when he works towards something, he values it more. It's human nature, we all do. And so the, what to do instead, if you find that you are a giver, link in your mind that what real giving is in a relationship is giving him the opportunity to serve you. Interesting reframe, giving him the opportunity to invest, giving him the opportunity to actually pour into you actually triggers his biochemistry more than receiving the gifts from you, especially if he's a masculine man. So notice the pacing, it's okay to give, but allow him to give to you. Make sure that that investment is equal and it will raise both of your biochemistries even more and help bond you together. The second common mistake is seeking validation. Seeking validation is where you seek to know how he feels about you, if he's invested in this relationship with you, if he likes you enough, if he finds you beautiful. And so as when we're not feeling secure, we're not feeling worthy, that kind of behavior slips out. It's easy to slip into seeking validation behavior. And the way it often comes out is we'll criticize ourselves or we'll put ourselves down, hoping the other person says, no, 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 I like you, or no, 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 you're fun. Yes, you are beautiful. So knowing this comes from a place of really feeling unworthy 
So the way to unravel this is to own your worth. Let me give you an example of this. There was a, a woman that I was dating and I found her beautiful, I found her sexy, and so one night we're making out and in the middle of the makeout session, she kind of pulls back and she's like, yeah, I just, I just don't feel really sexy. You know, I don't consider myself kind of a sexy person. And then she came back in for more kisses and we're like making out more. And then she pulls back and she's like, yeah, I just, I don't feel sexy. And I just, I, uh, I wish I could feel sexier. And she came in for more kisses and I'm like, I'm listening to this going, why are you telling me this? Like, you're telling me you're not sexy. I found you sexy and now I'm not really finding you sexy. Like, why are you, you don't feel sexy? And so she, her own insecurity, she was transmitting to me. Consider this for a moment. Chances are you're a person that knows everything is energy. We're actually, we're spiritual beings having this human experience. Your energy doesn't begin and end with your skin. Your belief, how you feel about yourself is, you're sending that out, you're radiating that out and other people are picking that up. So if you're radiating insecurity, you're actually transmitting that to him. He's gonna pick that up and you're shaping his perception of you. He's gonna start to see you as not enough, not sexy, not beautiful. But on the other hand, if you own your worth, if you own how sexy you are, if you own how beautiful you are, because no, that doesn't come from anyone else. That comes from you. That comes from you deciding, you believing, you say, you know what, I am enough. So instead of seeking validation, give that validation to yourself. Own it first, own your worth, and your man is gonna see you as worthy. And easier said than done, right? To say, well, I'm gonna increase my worthiness, but how do you actually do that? If you would love a proven process for how to increase your sense of worth and self-love, I've got a gift for you. I'm gonna link it up in the description down below. You can click that and it's called a self-love activation kit. And it comes with a meditation, it comes with some affirmations and I promise you, if you do this consistently over the period of several weeks, you will absolutely transform how you feel about yourself, how you own your worth and how you communicate your confidence to the world. Number three is shaping yourself to get him to like you. I was working with a client once and she was saying, yeah, I just find myself in this pattern where when I go on a date, I only wanna show the parts of me that I know he's gonna like. And so I don't show all of me. I'm not in that authentic self-expression and I'm watering myself down. You know, it's interesting. There is a phenomenon that chefs strive for called the bliss point. And it's this perfect mixture between sweet, and savory. And when you can strike that perfect balance, it creates this blissful experience in the person who's eating the dessert or eating whatever food it is. And so the challenge is in a relationship, if you're only bringing the sweet part where you agree with everything he says and you like everything that he likes and it's all the same, and you're not bringing any of your uniqueness and your perspective and your beliefs and your interests and your hobbies that maybe he likes, maybe he doesn't. That savory part, if you're not bringing that, you miss the opportunity to create something even richer, more enjoyable for both of you. There was a friend of mine who said he went on a date with this woman and he took a drink of water and she was like, oh my gosh, you drink water? I love water. And he was like, <laughs> okay. Uh, I think we all like water, is what he's thinking. And, she's, and he said she didn't even notice it. She was so into trying to get him to like her that she was finding any common ground that she could grasp onto and it totally pushed him away. She was like, well, she's just overselling herself here. No, be yourself in this instance. Share all of yourself and trust that the right man is gonna find all of that attractive. One of the greatest principles for manifesting love or deepening love is you've got to be willing to scare off the wrong man to attract the right man. And the right man is gonna love you and all of you for who you are. Number four, is declaring that you're in love too early, too fast. Relationships are often like jogging with somebody. If you've ever gone to run with a running partner, you want a running partner who's gonna stay and pace pretty much where you're pacing. What would you do if you went on a jog with a running partner and the running partner got out in front of you and then extended their lead and got out even more? They didn't turn and wait for you and they just kind of disappeared around the corner. Would you keep following them? Probably not. You'd be like, where, where are they going? Like, I, I can't catch up to that person. And the same thing is true in relationships. You may have even felt this with a guy who got way out in front of you. He declared how much he loved you way too early. And what are you thinking in that moment? You're thinking, can I catch up to him? And what's gonna happen if I don't catch up to him? And that's exactly what men are thinking. If you're declaring, oh my gosh, you're perfect. I love you, I'm falling in love with you, all of this well before he's even said any of that. What he's thinking is, I don't know if I can catch up to her. 
Now, here's the irony. He might catch up to you. He might fall in love with you as well, but if you outpace him to this degree, the fear of what happens if I don't catch up to her, if she's this in love with me now, if I continue on this track and don't catch up to her with my feelings, I'm gonna break her heart. I'm gonna devastate her. And if he's a nice guy, if he's a guy who has any sort of heart or feelings or caring, he's gonna pull back in the, this moment because he doesn't wanna devastate you. That's the natural effect. We all do that as human beings. So instead, let him lead the emotional pace of the relationship. Stay with him. Let him be the one to say he loves you. Let him be the one to lead. It doesn't mean you can't say that you like him and that you're attracted to him and that you're totally into him. He needs to hear that too. But to make those big leaps of saying, I love you or I want to commit, lean back, let him serve you, let him lead in those moments, and you lead the physical pace of the relationship. And those two pacings, he leads the emotional pace, you lead the physical pace, I have found over the last 10 years that this combination is the best combination for helping people go the distance in their partnerships together. And number five is needing labels too early. Disclaimer, there should be a label on this relationship eventually. You should know what his intentions are. You should know the status of the two of you, whether you're committed or not at a certain point in the relationship. But often, it's easy to get so excited or to feel insecure in a relationship and then the byproduct of that is needing to over control. And one of the ways that people over control is by wanting labels too early. What are we? Are we committed? Are we boyfriend, girlfriend? If you put a label on something and try to control it too soon without giving it the room to breathe and evolve and become something naturally, you can have that other person pull back. Now, again, there is a moment at which you should know where this thing is going but there's gotta be enough time for the two of you to have some clarity and to know what are we and what this is before you put those labels on it. So my question for you is, what are the things a man does that causes you to pull away? I'm sure there's been many. Go ahead and post those in the comment section below. I'm gonna love checking those out. And know this, I believe in you. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.